All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to Towns and Errors. Thank you all for coming for our beta test presentation. Our beta testers have worked really hard this year. Uh, our beta testers have been Marcus, uh, our programming secretary, Neil, and our programming mentor, Priscilla. Um, and I'd also like to introduce you guys for a new coach, Mr. Ivan. So.
there's some new functionality, for example, the recording and playback functionality. This is very new, this is very unique, allowing you to replay whatever actions you had. So if you were driving the robot earlier and you were displaying some files on the computer, you can display those files again using the replay functionality. And we'll show you some of that later. You can customize dashboard widgets even more. This year, last year, you were able to change uh, what type of widget they were and their placement. And now you can change a lot of things like their color, there's just a lot of new features that's also a part of this presentation. And the actual SFX settings allow you to change some robot information from Smart Dashboard. And finally, there are the new features of multiple tabs as well. This is very similar to a feature in your internet browsers where you want to use different instances of Smart Dashboard. You don't have to create a new full Smart Dashboard every time. You can use different tabs with it. So the new interface. This, like last year, automatically displays values for the Smart Dashboard. It's a single line in your code. Then Smart Dashboard up with something, usually with data. Smart Dashboard will automatically group this data by subsystem. So if we have a motor, let's say the front left motor and the front right motor, and they're both part of the drivetrain subsystem in our code, Smart Dashboard knows that, and we'll put it under a drivetrain uh, tab. Running Smart Dashboard this year, at least when we were testing, had to be done from the command line. We found that if we were just running it by clicking on it, that would run java.w.exe. And we contacted Patrick Planifish asking, why doesn't the settings button work? He told us you have to run it from the command line. So now you have to do java-jar, sfx.jar, for the jar file for Smart Dashboard. They're probably going to fix this by the time it comes out in 2014, but we found from beta testing it had to be done through the shell. It worked for us. Smart dashboard, yeah. The actual smart dashboard worked, but some of the buttons we found just weren't responding to us. When we did it from the shell, it actually worked. So that's the command you would use from the command line in Windows. This is the new interface. So smart dashboard is quite new this year. It has a lot of new colorful settings. You can see here it's grouped by subsystem. So on the top left is showing the drivetrain and then the elevator. This is not, of course, our robot but it's showing that there's a lot of different subsystems. Smart Dashboard will automatically group them together. And then new features of Smart Dashboard, this bottom toolbar not featured in last year. Of course, you would be able to open a widget palette for different widgets. You would be able to create a new layout for Smart Dashboard and save or open a layout that you had earlier if you want to use it again. The different tabs, which we'll get into later, but that's very similar to the browser windows as I explained earlier. And of course, Settings and the play record functionality, that play button will open up into a whole new playback feature. So on the left would be the palette. Just opening that up will show you any data members and variables you have in your code grouped by subsystem. So button one's fairly self-explanatory, just close the palette. Button two will let us uh, see which values are in the code. Button three lets us see different things in the toolbox, such as for a live window. And button four lets us configure the data and IP settings. This feature is also not completely developed yet, but they have claimed that by 2014, when this is all actually released, it will be fixed. So you'll be able to do that. The record or playback functionality is completely new. It's very interesting. Uh, button one will let you run the record functionality. So if you're driving the robot, press that button, and then the tabs, everything on the bottom will disappear, and then this window will show up. Button two will let you replay which will launch the playback window of this full controller on the bottom. Uh, let's you view different things, such as the media controls, very familiar, just stopping, playing, whatever you recorded. Button five lets you adjust the speed at which you're playing, so make it slower or faster. Button six lets you replay whatever you just recorded, so if you want to go back to a certain point in time when you were recording and see what happened during that period of time, you can do that. And button seven lets you save the data if you want to review it again later on. Dashboard widgets are more customizable this year. So like last year, you can adjust how they're positioned. You know, in a word processor, you would just send it to the bottom or backwards and so on. That's fairly self-explanatory. You can morph the widget into different types of widgets. There are more types this year. So morphing widgets will probably have more applications this year. And you can just delete the widget, of course. You can also resize the widget as last year, just by driving that for uh, the Morphing would change the interface that the widget gives you. So if you have a certain data, like the speed that, that motor is traveling, and you don't want it to display in the dial, maybe you want it to display it as part of the graph, you can morph the widget into the graph. When you 
you click on the widget, you can do a lot of customization to it. So here's the first window, allowing you to add a decorator, just label next to the widget, say what you want to write it to. So if you have a motor and you want to label it the front right motor, you can label it the front right motor. You can change the orientation of the widget to be vertical or horizontal relative to the widget. So the orientation of the label. And then there are even more settings because you can expand the range, of course, that is last year, you can change. If you have a motor, for example, you might want to go from negative one to one for something else. For something else, you might want to go from zero to three sixty. And then you can change sorry. You can change the range from there. And then the new feature is allowing you to edit the interface using Java FX CSS. This is not browser CSS, it's a special well, it's actually fairly similar, but Java's own CSS. So that lets you do cool things like this showing very simple background values in Smart Dashboard. You can easily customize that from the widget. And of course, morphing the widget. There are new widget interfaces this year. So we have a PID editor and a color sensor. Those are more specialized. But again, there are just more ways to display the data that you're getting from the robot. And of course, one button let you morph the widget. In Smart Dashboard, you can do several things, adjusting settings directly from Smart Dashboard. So Generally, you can change whichever layout you like, from the canvas to the graph, and so on. You can change the default types of data that are displayed when Smart Dashboard starts up and shows you the widgets. And you can change uh, how the widgets are added. You give a certain pattern to see which widgets go into Smart Dashboard. The tabs are very useful. It's much like a browser, as I said earlier. So you can see by the node one tab and your Smart Dashboard in the other, you can see multiple data between different tabs. So why don't we actually uh, give you a demonstration of that right now using our test control board over here. So what we've got here is just a single gear motor attached to a Jaguar, and we can change this value in Smart Dashboard. Okay, so running that. Uh, we have new robot single motor compiled, so waiting for that. And then if you launch the test mode, to the SFX, it will automatically display this in the live window tab. So this is live window. You have to record to actually do anything. So if I'm not recording right now, I can just move things around and so on and morph it if I'd like. So I'll go record right now. And then just adjusting this, or we'll adjust the speed that the motor is turning at. So you're probably very familiar with this feature in live window from last year. The interface is just much better. And you can also adjust how it looks using Java FX CSS. So let's try and do that. More, and then you can change, you try uh, something like. I'm sorry. And I'll change the background into a black color. You can make it very neon and cool if you want to do something like that. You can try. Uh, something like this, which is, this is actually probably fairly familiar if you've done browser CSS, but it's just letting you do it with little Java effects changes to it. So it's a little bit annoying, but it lets you change the colors very easily from Smart Dashboard, so that's my nice feature. And then that gives a little line view around it. So that's very cool, and it lets you change it inside Smart Dashboard. That's really self-explanatory. Let's try and go back to my window itself. So the live window in your code is the same as last year. You would just use one line, adding to live window, live window that adver we have an actuator or a sensor. So this would be adding a Jaguar speed controller. You would do live window dot actuator the subsystem, and then the name you're giving to it and the actual object in the code for command-based programming. This would be the same. With network tables, they've been fixing some of the bugs and some of the features in the table viewer, which lets us see different key value pairs. So if you have something like a counter and the value is zero and you want to adjust the counter, just a very simple example, you would be able to see that using table viewer. So we can show that to you now as well. This would just be a client server arrangement uh, showing you the robot is the client on the server and your computer is connected, communicating with it. So let's see that as well. So 
sadly they haven't sped up the compile times this year at all. So we still have to wait for that. Some of the new features also are that we do not actually test are we're adding an SPI device class, and there's more expanded compatibility for I2C devices, but we're not able to show you that here.
and q2 goes first, right? WPI, Google Let Us test their libraries. Every member here in the back of the room, thank you for the team members, the mentors, teachers here today. So Priscilla, Mr. Hyman, thank you very much. And Ms. Christine, thank you. So any questions? <laughs> So normally you would use that to drive straight. You would uh, find a heading, and if you're using PID, you would correct your heading using the gyro. You could use it in autonomous if you want to turn a certain angle towards something. Uh, once you're using an accelerometer or a gyro, last year I believe two balance on a bridge actually, so that's a nice application. Yeah. 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 So that's just basic applications of the gyro. But get rate probably you wouldn't use over get angle. It's just a nice feature. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, what does the YIP button do? Right. Uh, so why don't we go back to that? Also, yeah, this, this code for Neurobot was made using Robot Builder, which is the tool in the SN Spot FRC SDK. It just lets you create boilerplate code. So after you use Robot Builder and you put in whatever subsystem and commands you want for Java, you have to actually put in the code and let the robot drive around and stuff. But it's convenient if you want if you have like a lot of subsystems and you want to visualize how they work. And it also gives you an automatic wiring diagram, so that's convenient as well. Well, what's nice is also they automatically put in the live window and statements and the smart cache statements. And you can also automatically invert it. It's just a single flag inside Robot Builder. You can just press that button and it'll automatically invert the motor port. So 
wait for that.